Hi everyone, I'm Brinks, and this is our Advanced Ironmon User's Guide. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you've already watched the first video in this series that shows you the basics of setting everything up. If you are questioning how to get to where we are in this video, start with that one, then come back here and get to this point. For those of you that already know what's going on, this is the more advanced setup, and we're going to go ahead and get started with one of the most important things, in my opinion, intro skip patch. For a lot of these ROMs, it saves you a lot of time. And you're talking about a thousand plus runs to do this. This is kind of a massive step. After we finish that up, we will go into uh, generating game files and batches and with the Ironmon tracker itself. And then we're going to do some kind of quality of life configurations to finish everything off. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to work on is the patcher. So all the links you need will be in the description below. If you don't see something, comment, and I'll do my best to make sure I correct that. So what you're going to do is you're going to click this, which is by Dr. Seals. This is the Fire Red intro patch for version 1.1. Make sure you find yourself a Fire Red ROM. It is 1.1. As long as you do that, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, no promises with Leaf Green. Just a heads up. There are two links that you need to pay attention to. This one right here, which is going to bring you to the release itself. And this one right here, which is going to bring you to the patcher. So the first thing you have to do is go to the release, download this BPS file here. And once that's downloaded in the downloads, you're going to see it right here. 7.5 community BPS. You're going to go and click this link and you're going to download your fire red 1.1 rom so here's my uh 1.1 patch rom i already have one i'll use my non-patched one and then your patch file which is the one you just downloaded so go to your downloads 7.5 community bps and then you just apply patch it generates the patch and creates a download for you easy enough once you've got that done we're ready to go ahead and randomize this file let's go ahead and get our randomizer opened up now that we got a randomizer opened, we obviously the first thing we need to do is go to that ROM that we just found. And it's going to bring up a warning. Just hit OK. You're going to be fine. So you've got the ROM on. We need to go ahead and put our setting string in. We'll do that real quick. There we go. So technically from here, you can randomize your save, uh, which we'll go ahead and do that real quick just to show you. We're going to do a randomized save. We're going to pick a location for that and hit OK. So now we've got a save there. And that one's going to come into come into use later. And the other way you can do it is randomize a batch of saves. So by doing that, we're going to go to batch randomization settings. We're going to enable it. And we're going to say our starting index for this batch is one, and we're going to do 10 saves. And we want to go ahead and set ourselves a directory, which we'll make a new folder for it. Let's just test. And that's where we're going to put them. So what you have to do is just hit OK, and then you're going to hit randomize. And this is going to generate all 10 of those game saves for you on the spot and set them numerically, which is really, really convenient. This is our single made file. And then in our test file, you're going to see we have 10 games ready to go. And what that's going to do is give you kind of two different paths to set up once we actually run our ROM. We're going to go ahead and open up our emulator. We're going to open a ROM, which will be one of your save files that you just made. And we're going to go ahead and open up the first game. So now we need to set this up so that our tracker works with it. So you go into your tracker, you go to your tracker setup, and then you go to quick load and you have two different options here. Say we want to use ROMs from a pre-made folder, which is the batch generated method. We're going to go ahead and click set. We're in this folder and just click the ROM. So from now on, whenever you restart, it's going to go to the next numerical ROM in that folder and you're good to go. Uh, if you don't want to do that though, and you don't want to save a bunch and generate a huge batch of files, you can generate a ROM each time. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the randomizer jar, which is your randomizer file. So we just go here and there's your jar file. Click that. Your source ROM, which your source ROM is the one that we ran through with the intro skipper. Our source ROM is going to be this one right here, our edited patched fire red, and then our settings file. We're just going to set it on Kaizo. It's great because they're already in here. So you've got fire red, leaf green, Kaizo standard, survival ultimate, and then uh, ruby, sapphire, emerald. Same thing. So obviously we're doing Kaizo fire red and you're good to go. Each time you start a new game, this is going to generate a new save file for you. You have both of those methods ready to go, and you've got no issues either way. So please take the time, do one of those, you won't regret it. We're going to move on to some quality of life mod uh, additions, which have been given to me by a user by the name of UTD Zach. He actually seems to be kind of the, the person that is handling 
a large portion of the troubleshooting within the uh, Ironmon Discord. And he actually sent these to me, so super huge shout out to him. So we'll go ahead and get started with some basic settings that you should always do once you're ready up and running. So the first one we're gonna start with is your controller configuration. So you go to config, controller, and what you should do is manually input all of these buttons. You open it up, clear these, manually input them. It's gonna save you a lot of heartache. Highly recommend it. So take your time and do that. After you get that done, you wanna go ahead and go back to config, go to your hotkeys and pretty much clear all of these and only go with the ones you need. Uh, my recommendations are turbo, uh, increase speed and decrease speed. If you set those three on hotkeys, you shouldn't really need anything else. Clear the rest of those, save yourself the headache. Once you've gotten that done, we're gonna go ahead and move into the sound configuration. Something I did not know, which is really nice, is you go to configure, sound, and both of these will be enabled. So when you're fast forwarding, the game uh, volume gets really annoying. So you tend to just mute the game, or at least I do. Well, it turns out if you just disable this, anytime it's fast forwarding, it's going to disable the audio. You can always have something playing in the background, but when it comes to like battle music time, you, it'll enable when you go back down to single speed. Highly recommended as a setup. And it's, it's also incredibly easy. See here, another one is uh, just view window size. Recommendation is 3X, set it kind of to whatever you want. It's just another quality of life setup. Now, this is something that has driven me bonkers. One issue I've had is whenever you're running these uh, ROMs, you've got your tracker over here. You'll click one to say like, oh, it has low special defense or something like that. And then you'll accidentally click too quickly and it'll like full screen it or downsize it. Well, it turns out there is a way to fix that. So what you do is you go to your config, you go to display, you go to window and you uncheck this box down here. As long as you uncheck that, now you can click to your heart's content and nothing happens. It's actually super useful, um, highly recommended it. Last but not least, you will notice when I opened it up, my tracker was already up and running and ready to go. So the way you do that is you go to your uh, tracker, which, which tools, uh, Lua console. So I've already got mine open because it automatically opens and you're gonna change two settings in here. You're gonna go into file, recent scripts, auto load script. You're also gonna go into settings and you're gonna check this auto load with Emuhawk. As long as you have that, when you open it up, your Lua will already be running, your tracker's running, and you don't have to open this up every single time. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. One little troubleshooting thing to note is you need to make sure you install all the prereqs for these, for the BizHawk uh, emulator setup, and you need to restart your computer afterwards, and you need to restart BizHawk after the first time you've opened it to use it. Hopefully this video was informative to you. Um, I tried to keep it as quick and concise as possible. If you enjoyed it or you didn't enjoy it, like, comment, subscribe, please let me know. We're going to have a lot more Pokemon content coming down the pipe here pretty soon. Um, I'm working on a really neat project to release in the next week or so, uh, and it involves a giveaway. So if you like the content and you like free stuff and you like, um, you know, this sort of thing, please subscribe to the channel and come back for more. Thank you so much. Have a great day.